Hey friends, Shanna Kramer here with Creatively Uncorked. Tonight we're going to paint Lighthouse in a Storm. This is a new painting, and we this is actually the third painting that we have that's going to be Lighthouse in a Storm related, <laughs> which is okay. Um, so I have uh, my reference photo. Here, I'll get it scooted over. I have my reference photo right here. This is what we're going to be working off of. The only colors that I will be using today will be blue, black, and white. I have my sketch already done. And if you are a Creatively Uncorked member, you will have your sketch available in your downloads. Um, so you can just go ahead and download that from members.creativelyuncorked.com. Aside from that, we are working with acrylic paint today. We have a canvas, 9 by 12 canvas. We have a paper towel, keep that handy, and some water. I uh, also have, I haven't decided which brushes specifically I'm going to use for this, so I just have them all handy for a moment, and I'll let you know what they are, what they do, uh, when we're ready to use them. Okay, so my reference photo, I'll just keep it there just because I'll keep it nearby. Um, let's see if I can get it on screen for you. Well, maybe. There. Okay, now you can see it too. Just kind of put it up in the corner there so it doesn't block up too much. Lovely. All right, so now I can set this aside. And we're going to get going with our background first. With acrylic paint, you generally always want to work from the background to the foreground. Let's see, I'll just take a big old brush here. This is just a big brush for the background. Any large background brush will work. So what I'm going for here is uh, some kind of a cloudy effect. I'm going to stick, try to stick with only blue and black, or blue and white. We'll see what color that turns out. Yeah, I already don't like it. Let's add black. Okay, there we go. So blue and black. to get my kind of a, almost like a Payne's gray. Anyway, it's kind of my dark gray. And, and then we have a little bit of white here, so let's see what we can do. I wanna keep it pretty dark up here at the top. And this is just going to be my clouds, my storm, whatever's going on in the background behind this painting. So it's dark up at the top, it's dark down in here. Trying to just paint all the dark areas first and then go from there. So that's pretty dark. This is pretty dark. A little more blue. Okay. What else? We have kind of a dark wave right there. All right. Taking some of that paint back off. Just rinsing it, giving the brush a good swish in the water. Tap that on the paper towel to get some of the extra water and paint off. And now I'm just dipping into the white. So I've got some clouds. And I know dipping into the white isn't going to make white paint. <laughs> and I know that because my brush is dirty and my paint is wet on my uh, canvas already. So it's going to blend into that. This is meant to be a stormy scene. So just think storm when you're scribbling on your colors. trying to paint around this lighthouse, but you do it however it works best for you. I'm trying to paint around it just so I don't lose it. I want to be able to keep my pencil lines for later. Okay, how's that? Do we want more light, more dark? So this scene that we're working with this uh, right up here, this original scene, our original photo that we're working from is pretty complex, pretty complicated. We're not going to make ours that complicated. So that's part of our job today is simplifying a complex scene. Okay, I'll get my waves in here right now and then I can add the white to them later. Just get the right shapes for now. I know 
we have some waves over here we can do the same thing with. I don't want to go too overboard on anything in the background, but I might anyway, because that's what I do. <laughs> go overboard on the backgrounds. Um, okay, we've got some nice stormy waves right there. Okay, and then right here, we'll keep this a little bit lighter. All right, enough of that. I'm gonna let this go and uh, Move on. All right. Giving that brush a good rinse. Actually, I'm just gonna leave it in my water cup just to, so it doesn't, so the paint doesn't dry in the brush. I'll clean all my brushes with soap and water when I'm done painting. And let's take a look at this reference photo one more time. Okay, so the next scene we probably wanna do is See, do we want to do those rocks right now? Hmm. Yeah, we can do the rocks. Okay. So I'll just take a little bit of black on that brush. See, there's a little bit of a building back here. I'll just kind of add the shape of it in. do some rocks. Now I'm not working with all of the colors. If you can see on this original over here, there's a little bit of yellows, goldy colors that are on the rocks, and I'm not using any kind of a gold or yellow or anything. I'm just using blue, black, and well, blue, black, and white. So we'll just have to manage that some other way. Maybe we can add a little white or a little gray. kind of a rocky rocky little outcropping that our that our lighthouse is sitting on top of and while that paint is still wet I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white a little bit of gray actually I'm just gonna try and add some highlights to a couple of these rocks enough of that. Okay, I'm gonna move on now. All right, let's see here. So what I want to do is get this background filled in, the background of the lighthouse itself. And for that, I'll have a couple of different colors and I can probably mix those up to begin with. So my darkest dark, this is weird having this cover the whole screen, but the darkest dark on the right hand side is really pretty dark. So I'm just going to take some blue, some black, tiny dot of white. And keep in mind that acrylic paint does dry darker. So it's going to look darker than when you paint it on. It's hard to compare colors to something on screen. So let me just take a look here. Okay. How is that looking? Actually, that's looking pretty darn close, maybe a little more white. And yes, I just painted on my paper. That is the best way to tell if your colors are accurate. Just put a dot right on the paper. If you can see it, it's wrong. And I can still see it, so I'm adding a little more white. That is pretty darn close. Okay, so that is my dark color. Now my light color, mm, it's not quite white, but it's going to be pretty close to white. And I have pure white here, so this is my, oh, let me get this out of the way. Yeah, these things on the screen that don't belong there. Okay, so here's my white, here's my lightest color, here's my dark gray, that's my darkest color. All the blends are going to be between these two, which should be pretty simple. 
So I'm just going to... There's my dark shadow side. Actually, I'm going to come all the way up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll want to redo that. Um, so here's my dark side. And now I'm going into the white. So one thing, I mean, you could do a, a lot of vertical stripes down. That is going to be a little bit challenging once you get a little further into your painting, um, just because if you don't get it exactly right, it's going to look very wrong. So instead, it's often better to just make short, choppy lines like this, and that way it's really easy to blend your colors lighter. Taking the extra paint off the brush, picking up more white. And I'm only working through this a little bit at a time. Starting with the dark and then working toward light. And my brush, no matter what I'm doing here, my brush is still dirty. I'm not stopping to rinse the brush. And so any color that I pick up is going to blend into the color before it. Okay, we've got this black area. So here's what I'm looking at right now. This dark area is right here. So right above that, I have that same blend. Aren't we supposed to be simplifying? Okay, <laughs> let's simplify a little more. Back into the white. Yes, I am covering up an awful lot of my pencil lines, but it's okay, they're just windows. We can fix it. Okay, this is still way too dark over here, so wiping off that paintbrush again, picking up more white. Biggest challenge, at least for me, is keeping my straight lines straight. Okay, so this is another thing about making short choppy strokes like this is that you can make it look kind of brick-like, which, you know, the lighthouse has to be made of something, right? Why not brick? Okay, a little more white. Okay. While I'm working with that color, that really light gray color, I have this very top. Top of the lighthouse, there we go. to be dark on that one side. Very similar to the lighthouse itself. All right, let's get rid of that big fat brush and move on. Okay, so now I have an angle shader. This is just a little small, about a three eighths of an inch here. And this, I like these because they have the sharp point and they can cover a lot of area with paint. So I'm going to take that dark, here's my darkest color. Maybe a tish darker. So there's a tower on top of the lighthouse. Another shape on the lighthouse. Okay. Just 
Just stopping to take a look, making sure everything's okay. One thing I see that I want to change already is this line did not get very straight. Struggle with straight lines. They're not easy. Just try to get that to blend into the background. So one way to get your image to pop off the background, so right here where we have the dark side, we'll want to put a lighter color in the background. On here we have the light side of the lighthouse and we'll want to put a darker color in the background on that side. Making sure I have enough white over here. Okay, and then I'll go in with my darker color. Mm, is that too dark? Maybe. Okay, I'm right handed, so I'm going to flip this upside down for just a second. Just so I can see where I'm painting. color here, blending that into the background. All right. Okay, I'm going to wait until closer to the end to add that white from the water. So let's finish up our, the main part of this lighthouse. See, I'm going to leave those brushes in there. I know I'm using a lot of brushes, but that's because I have them. <laughs> so if you use whatever brushes you have, just as long as you have a variety of sizes, I'm sure you're going to be fine. So I have this small brush now and just dunking that in the water first just to get it started. Um, mixing water with my acrylic paint here. So let's see. So right, this is the black part. A little more water in that paint. And this is the top of the black part. And before I get too much more into that, I want the background of that painted and it should be similar to the rest of the lighthouse color. So. I didn't do this earlier because I didn't want to lose all my lines, but now my lines are gone, so <laughs> that's okay. I think we're far enough into it now that it doesn't matter. All right, so now I'm just going to add some structure. This is going to be the black part of the lighthouse. Just drawing some lines down. Adding some extra shading at the top. Okay, and we'll just keep going with that black. A few more areas that need to be that color. Let's see. I do too much more on that top part. I want to get some white in there because this is where my lighthouse is actually lit up. So I just want to brighten that spot before adding dark over it. Okay. Yet, but I did 
and to get really thin lines with acrylic paint, you have to use a lot of water, thin out your paint, thin paint for thin lines. Okay, so with the, my small brush, I'm just rolling the brush on the plate and that's going to get me the finest tip on that brush that it's possible to get. And light touch, light touch with the brush on the canvas will get you the thinnest lines. Okay, I don't want to do lines all the way through here because that light would be so bright that it would just obliterate these lines that are covering it. Okay, I'm working my way down that lighthouse again. With more black paint and we'll start adding those windows. Same thing just like before, you kind of roll your brush through that paint to pick up the wet, to pick up the paint. Here we go. And the other window, and we'll just put a triangle at the top of this one. And then we've got some uh, the window sides that go down, and then is it still a window sill if it's on the outside of the building? Maybe. Keep picking up new paint as you need it. If your brush starts drying out, you need to pick up a little new paint to keep thin lines. You have to use watery paint. You have to use thin paint. So keep picking up new paint as you need it. All right, how's that? Does it look like a window? And we can come back and add darker shadows around there if we need to. Since all lighthouses have buildings next to them, gotta have a place for the lighthouse operator to live, right? So there's my little roof. See, I'll pick up a little bit of white paint and blend into it. I don't want it to stand out too much. Just kind of an indication that there's uh, more to this lighthouse than just the tower. Bring some rock back over that. Okay. Looking good. Okay, I can see that I'm going to have to adjust this because <laughs> it's looking a little dancey and uh, lighthouses are not supposed to dance. So, gonna let that go for now. And let's take a look and see what we can do for some water splashes. So a bristle brush is going to be the best choice for the, the big splashy splashes. I have this, which is, well, it's a chip brush, but technically it's a bristle brush. And I have this little tiny bristle brush. So between these two, I'll have something that I can use. Um, but I wanna do some, let's see, some whites. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white here with the big chip brush. Tap, tap, tap. Just general tapping is going to make more of a spray. If you want a directional spray, you might have to just tap and drag a little bit. Okay, what do you think? Is it looking like waves? A lot of that spray behind the lighthouse. And on this side as well. So I know I'm probably going to run into my little top of my building there, and that's okay. I can get that back easily. Okay. And we've got a little bit of a spray on top of this big wave that's in the background. Shouldn't be quite so bright. It's okay if it's a little more gray. 
There we go. Gray it down a little. Take a little bit of that blue with my white and just kind of blend that down that wave. The wave is already there. We put that in early on. So I'm just going to redefine it a little bit. Same over here. I'm just redefining that wave with some light blue. All right. Wiping some of that excess paint off onto the paper towel and grabbing a little more white. Gentle tap, tap, tap. And I have kind of a grayish color on here now. I'll probably want to come back with a little more white. Over the top, just for a few areas. Okay. I'll set this one down for now. Uh, I, like I always tell you, put your brushes in your water so they don't get ruined. This is a chip brush. It's literally 25 cents. Um, it's a throwaway brush, so if it gets ruined, I'm not super worried about it. Besides the things that I use chip brushes for, it doesn't really matter <laughs> how bad a shape it's in. So yeah, I can abuse those and keep using them. Let's see, now I've got my little bristle brush. Let's see if this is going to work. All right. There we go. Just gentle tap, tap, taps again. This one, it's a smaller brush, so I'm just going to be reloading it more often. And if you don't have a bristle brush, just any old brush will do. Older brushes work better, generally, if they're old and beat up. Gives them a little bit more character. Painting like this is all about character. This wave crashing up on these rocks. And now that I have the, a little bit more control with this tiny brush, I'll just tap in a few more, a few more little light colored areas where I have that spray. right up to the building there. Just want a little bit more action without going overboard. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop that for now. Actually, I put both these brushes in the water for now and then I'll switch brushes again. Any thin brush will do, or a small brush, or let's see. I wanna do the water waves. So I have this little skinny brush. It's just really soft bristles on this one. And let's see how this does. So really, really watery white, and it doesn't even have to be white. It can be like a light blue, light gray. It just has to be darker than the water. We'll do this a few times. Okay, I'll start in this wave back here, just for practice, because that's the one that's least going to show up. So I'll just take the brush, barely holding it, and just kind of twist. No, nope, not watery enough. Paint needs to be really watery for this. There we go, that's better. So now we've got the waves. Give them a little bit more form there. You can kind of see the, the foam on top of the waves here is making this pattern. This is kind of in this area right here is what I'm going for right now. And 
And that's enough of that. If I do too much more, it's going to become a little too prominent. So I'll come down into here and start working with a slightly lighter color. Again, make sure your paint is really watery. Mixing more water into that. I think more white, actually. Lighter shade of gray. All right. Just barely holding onto this brush. More water, more white. So this is just a small, very soft bristled brush. And I'm just kind of giving it a little twist so we can follow those wave patterns, but not too accurately <laughs> because it's water. Painting water is a little like painting clouds. You don't have too much control over it. Okay, and you can tell me in the comments what uh, what kind of paintings would you rather see? Do you want to paint something simple and easy and fun, or would you rather learn some new techniques? Would you rather do all the drawing yourself? Which I know I've already had people that said yes, they've definitely want to do more drawings from scratch instead of uh, to trace them, which is sounds good to me. Water paintings will always be a thing because I love the water. So we'll get those in there no matter what. Okay, am I starting to get carried away here, getting too much of detail in this? Our goal from the beginning was to simplify. Okay, way too much detail, way too much detail. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit more gray here, just a little bit down here at the bottom, just kind of make this be part of the painting. Okay, I think that should be enough of that. All right, so let's do our last minute details. I think we have a couple of things about this. And by last minute de details, I mostly just mean anything about this painting that's still bothering you and you want it to, uh, you want to change it. Painting is all about correcting mistakes. Every brush stroke you put down is a mistake, right? And then you spend the rest of the painting correcting it, which is not a fun way to think about it, but yeah, I have people asking me, well, how do you uh, how do you paint and make it perfect? Well, <laughs> that is something that doesn't actually happen. So if you've never made a mistake painting, it's because you've never painted. Okay, I'm just gonna fix up the top of this. Is that looking okay? All right. I'll take a little more white. I think, whoops, got some blue in that. Okay, 
Okay, I'm dragging a brush with only a little bit of paint on it. This is kind of a dry brush technique. So I'm just dragging that brush right along the side of this uh, lighthouse here. And this is just going to brighten up that edge. It's just going to lay down a little bit of paint because there isn't much paint on the brush. Just keeping to the texture that's on the on the lighthouse already. Lovely. Yeah, I think that lightened it up just enough. All right. So with that out of the way, I have this edge that got a little bit crooked, and it's it's bothering me. So I'm going to fix that. Back to my flat brush that I used in the first place. Okay. Here was my darkest color. I'm going to mix it again because acrylic paint dries very quickly. So anything that I've had on my plate already is all dried out. Is that? Okay, one more time. I'm flipping it upside down. And then blend that color in a little. We've got bricks in this lighthouse, so we can just drag that paint out in brick shapes. Like so. Okay, any other touches that we want to make on this? What do you think, guys? You see anything? I'm thinking I want to make a little bit of a dark gray. A little bit more of a shadow color, like right down here. But I want this to be gray, not black. So we'll do building shadow color, which luckily we just mixed up a batch of it, so we have a lot of it. That's the same color that we just put down the edge, the dark edge of that lighthouse. Yeah, a little more shadows in here. <laughs> Be careful of fixing crooked edges. Oh boy, it's a slippery slope. All right, so I think at this point I better call it. Um, I'll call this one done. Did we overwork the water? Actually, I don't know. I like the water. That's my favorite part. But we've got our rocks. We've got our straight lines. We've got our blending. I think we did a good job on this one. So thanks for painting along with me, and I will see you next week right here, same time.